Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Drunken Master Paul. Yeah. And we are back with another of your archived internet radio broadcasts that you did back in like 1999, 2000. Yeah, yeah. It's a. This has been an amazing um, time capsule for that era, and uh, I was so happy I found them on my hard drive a, a few months ago, and I'm really pleased that Metal Jesus is able to bring these to you guys. That's right, and so I actually shared a list of some of them that you have. You have like 20, yeah. but to my surprise, uh, people overwhelmingly wanted to hear from the developer of Age of Empires. Yeah, go figure. I, I know. Mean, I expected you know, the Half-Life or the you know, Jane Jensen is stuff to be at the top of the list. No, you guys really are into the Age of Empires thing, which is ironic because I have no clue on Age of Empires. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually, I've never played the game, and uh, I was listening to the recording, and I'm going, yeah, I, I, I had no clue. <laughs> it was a fun cool. interview. I loved doing yeah, it. Yeah, it was but, really um, cool. For any information on the game, talk to this guy. Yeah, so this interview takes place, if I remember correctly, I was listening to it a while ago, um, after Age of Empires 1, but right before they're going to ship Age of Empires 2. Yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah, and so it's really cool because you get some insight into the how, you know, kind of the philosophy into the making of a sequel, some of the things that they want to fix, like the AI, the computer AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they talk uh, about that a lot. Yeah, they talk about that a lot. Also, some of the art uh, ideas. You also talk about piracy and trying to combat all that. It's really fascinating. Yeah, it's good stuff. So mm -hmm. we hope you enjoy this. Another peek into the past. Take a look. Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to everyone in the chat room. We've got uh, got some holdovers from last week's show, from the Babylon Five show. I see. I see a few Babylon Five names. In Bab Five. We've got uh, oh, Drazi guys. Drazi guy. There he is. And, and uh, Bulgarian. Uh, and Bulgarians in there. And Joe the wrestler, of course. Who, who and Rainbow Mom. Mom. Hey, we got somebody from Germany in here too. I think the Germany is going to take over the uh, the UK fans here. Although, see, they're willing to stay up till 4 a.m. to listen to us. Yeah, but, you know, whenever we talk about games and a German is listening, they don't really know what we're talking about because they don't play the same games we do. No. Theirs are all censored to pieces. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, yeah. We've seen that. Uh, Carmageddon was the one that springs to mind that uh, when released in the U.K. Right. and in Europe, they had to turn all the people to zombies and turn all the, the blood green. Yeah, over here, we're, we're killing policemen bloodily on the streets, and, <laughs> and over there, they're uh, slapping Pac-Man or something. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I'm not sure which is the right way to go. But uh, speaking of really cool games, we've got one of the coolest uh, dev teams on right now. This is uh, one of the games that I've been looking forward to for about two years now. And until Tribes came around, all I played was uh, Age of Empires. Now I have to sort of split my time between the two. And uh, coincidentally, we've got uh, some of the guys on online right now, and it's all their fault. Yeah, it is. I've uh, wasted a lot of time and, and had many an argument uh, with the wife about... Uh, going to sleep it's two in the morning <laughs> but i haven't quite finished off the shang yet you know no productivity and it's all your fault yeah we have the uh the dev team for age of empires 2 we have uh ian fisher hi hi uh the designer um herb is it herb or herb it's either way herb, <laughs> herb elwood one of the artists hi how you doing and uh, mario is it grimani 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 one of the programmers for uh age of empires 2 from ensemble studios hi guys hello welcome to the game dive all right. Uh, pull up a stool, hang out at the bar. <laughs> we choose to pull a little bit later on. Uh, we don't have no light beer, though, so yep. you don't get no light beer. And we don't have any Lone Star, because you're down there in uh, like Dallas, right? That's right. Uh, no Lone Star. No Lone Star, no. Oh, you're missing out. You do Shunner. Well, yeah, I come from Texas, so I remember Lone Star, but you don't get that stuff up here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough to get. you got to, like, smuggle it in in the, in the back of a big truck with a <laughs> big Trans Am in front of it. Wait a second, I'm thinking of a, of a different beer. Wait, I'm flashing back. Oh, no. Boy, did I date myself there or what? Yes. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. It's uh, good to have you guys on. We have a, a lot of people on from a, a different software company simply because we, the owner of you know, WorldStream kind of knows the people at Sierra real well. But, uh, yeah, it's good to get people on from, uh, from other places, get other points of view, and uh, see other cool games. So... Um, going to kind of head down the line here, let you guys introduce yourself to the, the folks in the chat room. Now, do you guys have the, the show up on your computers there or just listening? Just listening. Okay. Well, Strictly listening. Well, what we've got going is that we've got a live chat room with, uh, God, it looks like we have maybe, what, 50 people in there? Something like that? I think we have 1,000 people. 1,000 <laughs> people in the chat room and 10,000 listening on audio. This is huge. I think uh, Bill Gates actually has three versions of this running at any given time in his mansion. <laughs> And uh, we've got some graphics up right now. Uh, some lovely pictures of uh, the three of you <laughs> up there. Oh, no. 
We've, we've got Ian up there because he's the uh, the former rescue swimmer and the weightlifter. So uh, <laughs> we're going to slap him up there. Of course, I haven't been to a gym in about the last eight months, thanks to age two. So. I've been in the same boat, but for me, it's because I'm so damned lazy. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mario up there. It's a good shot. and uh, Oh, that's a nice shot. Thank you, Dan. So, see, the problem is once Dan gets a hold of your picture, God knows what it's going to wind up on. Oh, great. <laughs> that's nice. Uh, we've got a picture of the game dive at uh, one.net, which is our email address of uh, a lovely um, specimen of manhood. Just all I have to say is tidy whities plaid shirt, and a construction hat. And Paul's face <laughs> on it. And, yeah, and a beer. Oh, it's sad but true. But, of course, we have no pride. Hey, let's uh, go down the line. Let you guys say a little something about yourself to the crowd. Uh, let you know what, uh, let them know what you're doing on the game, and uh, and so they can hear your voice and associate a a name with a voice. Uh, let's go ahead and start with you, Ian. Uh, I am a designer. I have been working on pretty much the last six months doing exclusively unit balance. Uh, about this time, we're pretty much wrapped up on that aspect of the game. So I am bug hunting and doing a little bit of work on the AI. Uh, polishing up single player stuff or helping to polish up single player stuff really um, beside that putting in some hours trying to finish everything off very cool uh, Herb? Uh well I'm the artist here that does uh, the interfaces and I do all the train and uh, 2D artist so I don't do much of the buildings or the units and same thing as Ian like lately we've just been doing a lot of play testing and trying to get things going and uh, finish this thing off and you're originally from uh, the Dallas area, aren't you? Actually, I'm not. Uh, oh. Well, I was born in Houston, but I was raised in Louisiana. Oh. I'm a ass in me. <laughs> Ooh, well, you can have that removed with modern te techniques now. <laughs> <laughs> Lasers do wonderful things. Ooh. <laughs> and Mario? Yes, I'm a programmer, and my uh, primary responsibility is a computer player AI. I've been working on that uh, for the last uh, year and eight months. Looking forward to wrapping it up and uh, letting people see what we've been working on for so long. Very cool. And I can tell from, from your accent, you're definitely from Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living in Dallas for 10 years. That, that counts for something. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Croatia. I was born there. Uh -huh. I grew up there, went to school. I moved to the States when I was 21, which has been just few years back, I'm actually one of the oldest guys here. <laughs> Just a couple of years. It's a, a yeah. young sprout. But I got I got custom to the area here, so I'm really pretty much an atheist. Although I still get asked the question when I meet somebody here, well, how do you like it here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty well. How about you? So the Croatian genes must be uh, pretty rugged for you to be in, in that area for 10 years and not have the accent. It took me about three years to drop the Texas accent. It's, it's a real easy one to pick up. Yeah, it's, it pretty, is. it's pretty bad to be in the Pacific Northwest and you, you can't pronounce any of the Indian names because you're from Texas. <laughs> um, I got uh, I got in a lot of fights in uh, grade school because I couldn't say Puget Sound. I came out kind of like Pudget, Pudget Sound. <laughs> uh, you from Puyallup? I just I couldn't say it. it was I got really your ugly. Pudget right here. Yeah. <laughs> now uh, I mock others who move up here from down south. It's uh, it feels better. Well, uh, welcome to the show, guys. All right, we're glad to be here. We um, have a real, uh, real tight format, right, Robert? We always uh, we professional. Follow, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we just move our lips. It's really Dan, our producer, doing all the talking. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to tell you where he has his hand. He's running, running the controls. We do have, uh, as I mentioned, somebody from Germany listening. Um, they're, of course, eight hours ahead of us, so they've already listened wow. to the show. No, actually, it's more than that, isn't it? It's eight, nine hours ahead of us. Nine hours ahead. Yeah. So oh, they, that ain't so bad. They're just getting up. Yeah. They, on their way to work. <laughs> we I, should I, ask him what we do later because uh, he's been there already. Yeah, he, yeah. Nine hours ahead. He's heard the show and gone to bed already. Wow. Ask him how it turns out. Yeah, let us know because if it sucks, we might as well close it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> might as well shut it down. That's right. So, um, let's see. What do they do? So, um... What other, uh, start from the beginning, uh, Ian, what other g games do you work on besides uh, AOE 2? Did you work on the original AOE? Uh, I, I did, but I came on at Ensemble close to the end of that project, so all I really did was kind of cut my teeth on that and do a little bit of work on uh, uh, single-player stuff. I did some of the, the scenarios that were shipped with, uh, for multiplayer play, and I did, some of the, I did a lot of the demo work with uh, Chris Rippey. Uh, we did like three or four 
different versions of the demo for that game, and we did uh, unique scenarios for all of those. I worked on some of the wrap-up scenarios, but really I, I came on the project too close to the end to uh, do too much on that. Can you uh, actually, I'm going to have you do this as well, give us a rundown of what uh, Age of Empires and Age of Empires 2 is like. I know most of the people listening in are, uh, you know, came here to hear you guys. You know, God knows they don't come here and listen to us every week. <laughs> we don't have a guest on. It's pretty much uh, Robert, me, Dan, and Cricket. So, uh, Wicket. Wicket. Quick. Oh, those Wicked the Ewok, yes. <laughs> uh, an Ewok! Them's good eating. Uh, yeah, give a quick rundown on what the, what the game is like. We know it's a real-time strategy, but uh, give an overview for these people who are turning in just to hear our sultry voices. Age and Age 2 are both uh, kind of what they call god games. You play as the guiding spirit of an ancient Stone Age tribe, and you make the decisions for your people and carry them forward into... Uh, Age runs for about 10,000 years, and uh, Age 2 runs for about 2,000. And you guide them through that period of history, and you make all the decisions as to uh, when they build infrastructure, when they put up buildings, what they collect resource-wise, um, how they structure their military when they go out and fight, um, what technologies they research, and, and that variety of thing. It's uh, got a single-player and a multiplayer element. We also have campaigns and scenarios that are included with it. Um, a lot of extensibility. We have an X-Pack out for... Uh, for Age of Empires, Rise of Rome. Uh, we have people that make tons and tons and tons of their own AI scripts, <laughs> their own scenarios, their own campaigns. And uh, we get a pretty big community. We're surprised by the, the size of the community that's sprung up around the game. Yeah, they will. They will latch onto it, won't they? Yep, get a lot of email. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one thing that's, uh, you know, in recent years that has uh, happened with uh, games, especially the multiplayer games, is the community that's come up around them. Uh, Robert and I have done several shows on this, and uh, it's it's fascinating how much people take this to heart and really live it. I mean, not, and not just games like um, EverQuest or Ultima Online or The Realm or anything else, but games that, you know, don't necessarily have that that world set up, where it's just uh, they're gaming back and forth. And it's uh, it's really interesting. I think it's where the Internet is starting to come of age. It was surprising to me to, to, to you know, the, the longer you spend in this business, the more you learn about all the aspects of it. And one of the things that really surprised me, one of the things is, as a designer you really have to do is learn how to divorce yourself from the, the kind of game that you like to play and be able to look at games that other people play and find out why they find them fun and what's fun about them. And uh, one of the things that I found really interesting was, or really odd, rather, from my perspective, is what people do with games and what kind of games people enjoy. And, and whereas I'm a really... I kind of like realistic games with a lot of detail that take a long time. And uh, I was surprised that there's so many people that, that like the exact opposite, that like these kind of fluffy games that don't take much time at all, that, <laughs> that can play very quickly, that don't take a whole lot of thought. Learning curve that is actually flat. Yes, yeah, the pick up and play. And I, yeah, I always tell a story about when I was you know, growing up and I would go to buy games and I would judge whether or not I should spend my money on a game by how much the box weighed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if I shook it around and heard the encyclopedia in there, I knew that I had a good game on my hand. Tell you had to read, read a War and Peace in order to uh, get the game going. Yeah. Now, I, I absolutely agree with you. I uh, always like games that have some kind of depth, some kind of learning curve where you can really get into it and, and tweak and everything. But I, I also... Now, as the years go on, find that I have li uh, less and less time, and yeah, I like games I can also pick up and just romp on. Yeah. So, um, are you telling us that you didn't initially like uh, real-time strategy in games like this? I, w I wasn't as big a real-time strategy gamer as I was like a war gamer, or um, I really like uh, like tactical war games too, like XCOM. I was playing a lot before. Mm -hmm. before I came on the ensemble, but when I and I guess I wasn't bit by the bug until I came to ES. And when I got here and started playing, uh, you know, Age of Empires for 12 hours a day, <laughs> <laughs> you get caught pretty quick. You will learn to play. That was, an, that was another interesting thing about coming on at Ensemble was that uh, when I came here, you know, this was the first game that came out of Ensemble, and everybody was like, well, I, I hope this do does well, I hope it does well. And I was coming from the outside, and I had played the game for a lo about a week. I'm <laughs> like, you're insane, this is going to sell millions. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough to make that call when you're right inside. Right. And, and well, you know, it probably didn't hurt that you're uh, publishing through Microsoft, because they have that little thing called the, the Gaming Zone. They've been great to us, man. Microsoft yeah. has been a, a fantastic asset for us. We work very, very well together. Very cool. Well, we're going to grab a, grab a break. And uh, be back in a couple of minutes. We're talking to Ensemble Studios, the Age of Empires 2, Age of Kings. This is the game dive. We'll be right back. Uh, hey, are you guys uh, into taking some calls? We actually have a, a caller online that wants to talk to you live. Sure, sure. Is that good for you? All right, welcome to the game dive. Who's this? 
Uh, my name is Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? Doing all right. Good. Uh, do you have your ID? My ID? Yeah, you're in the game dive. Oh, it's twenty one. Uh, oh. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, what's up, what's dude? going on, guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys I'm, know uh, each other? Okay, we'll let him in. That's all right. I'm uh, currently testing the uh, latest build right now. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think? Uh, it's it's looking pretty good. Everything's looking solid. We're getting really close. We're getting really close to getting this thing out the door. Late nights and uh, pasta and pizza and caffeine as much as we can get. I'm just trying to <laughs> caffeine is the devil's drink. drink. You know that, don't you? What's that? Caffeine is the devil's drink. You know that, don't you? Oh, no, sir. It keeps me awake as long as it does. I, I probably wouldn't be awake now if I wasn't drinking caffeine. That's one of the reasons it's a I gotta write Mountain Dew and tell them that <laughs> I just absolutely love them. They should all get an endorsement. Mountain Dew should get an endorsement on every game that goes out the door. Yeah. Just right on the label. I'll, I'll totally endorse them. So are you there in the building, then? Yeah, I'm over here in uh, Redmond. Yeah, he's in Redmond. He's not here. Oh, he's all, all the way over in the Evil Empire. Yeah, yep. in the Evil <laughs> Empire. <It's> not... <laughs> hey, what do you think of that storm the other night? Which oh, the hailstorm? Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. What happened was, uh, for those of you who don't live in this area, uh, going home the other night, I look up, there's this huge thunderhead. Uh, biggest thing I've ever, biggest storm I've ever seen in this area, actually. It looked like somebody just nuked Redmond. And I looked up, my first thought was, ah, they must be beta testing Windows 2000. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was you. I that, too. I've got uh, Windows 2000 over here and testing that on it, too. Uh, it was Bill Gates oh. calling down Zool, wasn't it? <laughs> There is no Dana, only Zool. Uh, i got to turn down my speakers. I'm listening to myself speak here. <laughs> How would you like that little delay? Yeah. That, that is not for, to edit us or anything. That's just the way the Internet works. It's a fine example of how hard it is to make a multiplayer game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the lag. Lag. Yes. So uh, what exactly are you, you checking out right now? Um, I'm running some, uh, some AI tests uh, with, uh, with villagers, uh, running them through some, some stone tests, making sure that uh, when, you, when you tell them to mine stone, they don't stop mining stone, or when you tell them, to, uh, tell them to chop trees, they don't stop chopping trees for no valid reason, stuff like that right now. Now, that was uh, an annoying tendency in the original AOE, which, uh, which had a few annoying little glitches like that, but the game was so good you just sort of overlooked them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know Dave uh, Pottinger. I know he's probably been working overtime to get all this stuff working, and uh, I don't know if you're listening, but we really appreciate it because it's, it's looking better than it was in the previous build. So. I always just assumed the villagers were uh, lazy and, and unionizing or something. <laughs> yeah, they, just, they weren't getting their wages, so they just stopped, I guess. Don't you usually yeah. have a, a lord come through and just take off their heads then? Hmm. <laughs> that, that's that's your, your guys' call, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody peasants! Swack! Ooh, then the rest are working twice as hard. Joe, the wrestler in the room, just asked if the village people were back. No, Joe, wrong village people. Oh, that'd be a, a cool <laughs> Easter egg to put in there, wouldn't it? Making more village people, and you get one guy, the construction worker, and one guy in the leather out there singing and chopping. Yeah, we wouldn't get food. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> they, could, they could use the publicity. I don't know I if it would make me a... play the game more. But... <laughs> We actually got a write-up on that. Someone wanted us to make that game. So <laughs> The village people game? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. It had Xena in it and everything else. <laughs> well, you know, they wouldn't be good at collecting stone or wood, but maybe unemployment checks. Yeah. <laughs> I think and they're collecting the, a few of those. And uh, KTEL residuals. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for calling in. Do you have hey, anything? Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, just wanted to call and say hi. I, I just picked this up. Uh, one of our marketers sent it to us, so I thought I'd check it out. So you guys have a good time. Well, by all means... Uh, Check us out anytime and bring all your friends. Okay. I'm not, I'm not afraid to be a quick shill for the game dive and get more people in here. I'm not proud. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks for calling in. Yeah, take it easy. Bye. Right. So now you've got people who are supposed to be testing your game, listening to the game dive. <laughs> <laughs> What's all about? We're finally doing to you what you did to us with AOE yeah. <laughs> for productivity. That sucker ship's late. You can blame us now. <laughs> you can't be mean to him or he'll go back and put like 10 raid bugs in for all of us. <laughs> no. Midnight. Fatal error. <clears throat> Fatal error. Oh, I'm not going to pick up no rocks. <laughs> uh, that'd be great. Hey, um, coming up here pretty soon, we're going to have uh, the game babe. Now, you've met the game guys. But we also have the game babe, uh, Cindy Van is our, our news babe. Should be in here in a couple of minutes. Uh, Dan, we got her, her in yet? No, not yet. He's giving me the big go away. I'm talking to my 900 number. <laughs> Straightening my head in there. So she'll be with us in a couple of minutes. Um, you've got uh, how many people testing this now? I mean, we have that was Jeremy, right? On all fronts. Yeah. Because you're getting pretty close to shipping, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we're real close. Um, to put it, I don't know how we could even begin to put an official number on it. We have uh, 
Microsoft, which has its own core test team plus mm -hmm. a group of uh, kind of expert level players who um, play it for the gameplay, you know, looking for balance problems and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. they have kind of technical testers and gameplay testers. We have several groups of local and uh, you know, international home beta testers that we ship copies of the game out to and uh, and get feedback from. We have our own in-house testing um, with our staff. Now, when you say you have a Microsoft testers, is that people who are supposed to be testing or people who are supposed to be working on other things? And they they the have game? both. They have uh, they have a core <laughs> team which tests on uh, our stuff, but they also have, they bring in guys from from other teams. You know, they have bug bashes and things and put a couple hundred people on it on certain nights. Mm -hmm. Anyone with a CD burner pretty much is beta testing the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say well, that. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. The reason I bring that up is uh, being in the gaming industry. Uh, I always I hate hearing from customers. You never tested this. You don't have anyone testing it. What's wrong with you? And I always like to bring up that yes, there are lots and lots of people testing it. So they can't what, get everything. What they did is uh, with the all the testing and stuff. Microsoft went out and hired the best players of the game and put them in there and made them their testers. Wow. <laughs> uh, you guys must have um, you must have lost my number when you were doing that. <laughs> yeah, email the game dive at one.net, ask for Robert, and he'll be happy to test that out for you. Yeah, so I played real well right up until I heard that walla low thing. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, I hate that sound. <laughs> oh, that's the best sound. <laughs> You'll be happy to know we've replaced it with a new sound in this game. <laughs> He goes, la, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> you don't respect my authority. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's take that call, Paul, and then we're gonna, and a, we're, after that we can actually talk about Age of Empires 2 for a while. What, we can get to the topic? That's so out of character for us. Well, I know. Go ahead and bring him in. Hi, this is the Game Dive. Who's this? Hey, this is Washizu from Age of Empires 7. Is it tight? Washizu. Is that anything like Mawashi? Washizu, yeah. Washizu. It sounds like a sumo wrestler's name. Uh, maybe it might be. I don't know. Yeah, everybody calling your program are people that we that we know very well already. <laughs> <laughs> no new contact. Not at all. So, uh, what are you doing? Anyway, um, my question is for Mario. Is he still there? Yes. He's um, very quiet. H2 claims to have a much better AI system than H1. Now, when you guys started H2, what was like the most important thing you guys knew the AI had to be able to do? Was it like make walls, uh, check the opponent's achievements, like? What did you knew to do, you had to do to make it better? Uh, well, we had to, we looked at the comprehensively what's the weakest point. You start from there rebuilding that, and uh, in this case, that was the build list. Basically, the original age was working off the preset list of things that it wants to build. That includes buildings and units, and it would follow it blindly, regardless of what situation was happening on the on the play field. And that really hurt it badly because it was you know not responding to anything that's happening on the terrain. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the first thing to do was to, to gut that and replace it with new code, which we I uh, wrote the expert system for that, which turns off the rules of the behavior. So AI is really monitoring what's happening. It's based on that. It builds buildings, trains units, and it's going to respond to what units you're using and so on. So we got the flexibility in. The second thing that we looked at was a pathing, which was very slow, and we didn't have real formations in. So we improved on that aspect by the improving padding quite a bit uh, it's quite a bit faster now and we also had to do it because the formations had to be supported and they require a lot of checking between the units to, to walk in units and uh, we also after that those are two crucial areas there's one area in the middle which is a tactical AI there are quite a bit of things that people could do to AI to mess it up and you know and for some reason they would keep doing these doing it and saying it ruins the game for them so we have to look <laughs> at the comprehensive list of those things and take care of them so that you cannot come in and uh, build a wall around the town center or uh, you cannot wall yourself in and they would just stand in front of the wall and then <laughs> fire while you slaughter them with your tower. So we do a lot of work on, on that aspect where AI understands where the walls are and takes them down with the proper mm -hmm. siege units so you can go through and, and towards your town. We also fix the transports. So now AI knows if it cannot reach you, it can also transport. It, it knows the concept of transport, trans transporting on the inside where your town is instead of just, you know, anywhere on your island. And mm -hmm. I think the overall feel is much, much better. The response that we're getting from the people is about two to 20 times uh, harder than the original. People would start playing, they set it to what they're used to, and they get beat really badly and start scaling down the number of the players and difficulty. And uh, we're very, very happy with it. Cool. I hope that answers your question. 
I yeah, think that answered it. Answers it uh, and a half there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of work, so I mean, uh, I have, we have a lot to show, you know. Sorry, I said we had to yeah. talk about the game some. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's great. Of course, that's um, playing the single player. Which uh, personally, I tend to go for the the single player of games more than the uh, the online multiplayer. And um, yeah, the having the extra intelligence, you know, so they're not being stupid, you know, driving you crazy. It's uh, it makes the game for me. I mean, we've had uh, I played you know Warcraft, uh, Starcraft, um, Outpost Two. I actually played Outpost Two all the way through, and it's a lot of fun. But if you're if the AI isn't at least being vaguely intelligent, of course. So you said it ruins the game. So you were that guy that played Outpost 2 all the way through. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't have to pay for it either. So I didn't help the sales at all. All right, well, uh, thanks for the call. Yeah, sure. Um, something else about the, uh, you said you're doing a lot of AI work and a lot of uh, beefing that up. How is that going to affect the uh, online multiplayer aspect? Well, the, the, the way it's really architected, the lowest level affects everybody. Mm -hmm. It's only the highest level that affects the single player. So strategic AI yeah, that we added with expert system which is going to affect only the the single player aspect of it. But uh, unit AI information is going to affect everybody because the u units were, walk much better and everything's much smoother about it. Also, what, uh, another thing that got fixed is uh, computer opponents now don't flood the communication with the messages. So you mm -hmm. can truly play with the mix of computer players and human players multiplayer as well. Ah. Because we have done a lot of testing last past uh, past couple of weeks for like you have like two, three human players and maybe four or five AIs against them or put AI on yours, you know, to help you out. So that, that's possible to, to help, especially for the people that are not really hardcore that want to do only multiplayer against other people. It's going to add a lot of flair to the game. Uh, the system itself also handles the messaging, so AI can actually request things from you and understand when you request something from them. Wow. With respect to trading, so it asks you, AI will ask you if you know, if you need some resource of wood or food or stone or gold, and if you give it to them, if you ask, they will respond and give you that as well, and that's all, all part of the language that we built for it. We were playing a game the other day in a, in a play test, and that happened, and it was, a, I didn't even know, I mean, unfortunately, I didn't even know that was in the game, and I'm <laughs> sitting here playing, and all of a sudden, it's telling me, you know, give me some food or something, I forget <laughs> what it was asking for, and I was like, you know, who is just shut up, you know, because it was one of our guys when the play test. I'm like, shut up, get your own food, you know. And then I'm, after the game, they're all screaming at me, telling me, why didn't I help the computer player? Because he was next to me getting killed, and he was asking for food. And I'm like, well, I didn't know. It fooled the developer. Yay! Yeah. Well, I don't know. Robert, is there any other game out there that allows you to play with the people and the computer AI? I don't really seem to recall one. Uh, if you look around, I, I think you'll probably find some RTS games that might have a, a combination. Uh, Age of Empires was always pretty strong that way. Uh, that was one of the, the nice features was you could play one other person and then throw in a bunch of computer teams and and they wouldn't be nearly as good as, as playing the other person unless, of course, he sucked. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> uh, but they would distract you and, and take resources. And uh, arrow fault. Uh, they could be real irritating. I mean, the trick was to be the guy who set up the server so you could put all the enemy units closer to the area of the map where your opponent is. Oh, sneaky bastages. Well, um, with the multiplayer aspect, of course, you're going to be using Microsoft Zone. Um, AOE uh, 1 uses the zone, correct? Yeah. And uh, a um, AOE2, I'm assuming, will, of course, use the zone as well. Now, the big thing that people hit, and this has been the um, the bane of existence for online games, is lag and uh, two things, lags and uh, hackers. Um, what are you uh, doing about that stuff? Sounds like AOE is going to be pretty uh, CPU intensive. Yeah. We've got some, uh, well, we've made a lot of uh, inroads on both of those. As far as hackers are concerned, we have this great feature in the game now. It's ended up being a lot of fun, and we think it's going to be fun once it gets out there in the community, too, which allows you to record games, um, and you can play them back. We didn't oh. achieve, like, full VCR controls the way we wanted to, but uh, it'll still let you record a game, and then go and, and watch it from any player's oh. perspective, and you can turn the fog of war off so that you can see everything that's going on in the game. And uh, so that's kind of a... a it's closing the back door on some kinds of cheating because you can go in and record the game, and when you're done, if you think somebody was cheating, you can watch the replay, and if buildings suddenly appear or someone suddenly gets a couple thousand stone or gold or something, you know that something non-kosher was going on. 
Um, yeah, also, the experience from from age one, all the all the bugs that we uncovered in age one, or all the the hacks that people made. Just uh, all we did was keep those in a gigantic list, and then went in later and armored all those areas against it. Will you have some kind of a uh, moderation or any kind of tools to uh, take care of people who are cheating, or not? Um, the tool that we have to take care of people that are cheating right now is that the game goes out of sync and drops if someone's cheating. There's a there's a check in there, which uh, sounds a little severe, but the logic behind it is kind of why do you want to play a game with someone that's cheating, you know? Um, so well, that's uh, that's actually true only for a certain certain types of cheating. I mean, the vast majority of the cheats that were used in Age One were people that found a way to they either found an exploit, which was something that we didn't anticipate, mm -hmm. or that figured out a way to use the cheats that were inherent in the game. I mean, the, the simplest and cheapest way to do that was to turn them on suddenly just before you started the game so that nobody else saw the cheats were on and, you know, then use them with some discretion so that nobody else realized it. But uh. some of the more sophisticated people figured out ways to build trainers that would allow them to turn cheats on and off during the game. So that's, of course, something that, you know, once we figured out how they were doing it, that's something we addressed in, in the game. I always figured that uh, there was a lot of cheating going on in AOE because sometimes people beat me, and that <laughs> be happening without some kind of trainer. He well, says the same thing about tribe. The fixing cheating problem is you take away excuse from a lot of people. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double yeah. sword there. Yeah, let's not get too wild here, guys. <laughs> he can't win it. I need that. I need that to lean on. You know. <laughs> yeah, because he hates that wizard turning his people into a. Uh, the other side too often. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's why I can't stand fighting against someone who takes the Egyptians. They just huddle up behind the walls and give the old walla low before you get anywhere near them. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> hey, we're going to get into a little bit more about the uh, the online aspect of uh, Age of Empires 2, a little bit more in depth into the game, and uh, more stuff that you guys want to bring up. This and uh, uh, take another call. And take another call. We have uh, some more people calling in. Boy, you guys are popular. It's yeah. probably a guy in another room right down the hall from you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the PH one of those guys it, it, $20 it, before they it, called in. Hey, Bob, call in. Make us look good. <laughs> this is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to get your mom on here. <laughs> this is the Game Guy with the Game Guys. We'll be back. The guys from Age of Empires 2, Age of Kings. We got Ian Fisher, the designer. How you doing? Herb Elwood, artist. Actually, Herb stepped out to turn on the air conditioning for us and ah, shut us off. That's a, a euphemism for he either went for more coffee or went for the, the loo, right? <laughs> well, oh, actually, you guys are ran out of tequila. You guys are down in Dallas, so it probably actually is warm down there. Yeah, yeah we have, the building shuts it off at six. We have a special card that you have to send somebody <laughs> downstairs to turn it back on for the next, you know, twelve hours that you're in the office. Yeah, they don't realize that some people work after five. Hello. <laughs> yeah, aren't there a couple other loser game companies in the close vicinity to you? <laughs> <laughs> They're not all losers. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that one that makes that that dumb that quake game. Really and then there's <laughs> game, yeah. And then there's those guys that make Dominion. Oh, I mm -hmm. hear the silence. Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> Who? Me? What? No. <laughs> we're, actually, we're pretty good friends with the guys from, from Ion. They, uh, we go back and forth from offices every now and then. They, uh, <laughs> you, they have, within walking you go there because their air conditioning works in that big <laughs> 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 They have a pretty posh little setup. Yeah. Nice I, office. I, I mean, look at my, my notes here. What, didn't one of these guys work on, on one yes. of those games? That's why we brought it up. Uh, we that's noticed good. on the bios here that... Uh, that's why I was quiet. <laughs> uh -oh. on me. Painful subject here. <laughs> no, it's not, really. So, uh, how long did you work on, on Dominion? Uh, let's see, probably about a year. Wow. And then... I mean, started at 7th level and then continued at Iron Storm. What did you think went wrong? It's hard to tell when you're so close to it, really. It never really sold. I've never played the game, so I, I can't I make a comment it's on really, it. I mean... I didn't expect it to sell millions of copies. Uh, I might be subjective because I was so close to it. I don't think it sold. Uh, I don't think it was that bad. You know, if you look at the sales, there are many games, RTS games that are much worse than it. That mm -hmm. Dominion is. So I, I, I don't know if you got a fair uh, share. I think part of the problem is uh, a lot of the press was just waiting to uh, hop on Iron Storm and punch him with something. And I think they uh, they kind of asked for it for being really loud and really doing strong PR and yes. you really have to back it with something that's you know unearthly and you can paint yourself in the corner that way. And I think that was part of the problem. The second part was I think the timing was bad. It came out a couple of months after StarCraft and you just don't do that unless you have an established franchise. Yeah. yeah you're not, you're not going to yeah. want to go up against StarCraft. You know, if, if it went like maybe six months before StarCraft or something like that when there was a void of good games, I think it could have done much, much better. 
So, but I mean, I would like to say that for the whole team that put a lot of effort, like any game company I worked for, people are always hardworking, very enthusiastic, and they love what they do. And sometimes you get a you know product that sells a lot because sometimes you don't, but that doesn't necessarily put a bad mark on the the team that did it. You know, it's it's good to hear somebody talking uh, good things about Ion Storm. I mean. The press has been pretty much dissing Ion Storm, and uh, <clears throat> I know uh, an internet talk show that uh, has a lot of fun at uh, Mr. Romero's expense. Uh, well, you know, they're an easy target. Yeah, it's good to hear uh, <laughs> something positive from somebody who was there, unlike uh, schmucks like us who just read press releases and stuff like that. Well, to be fair, they're probably going to completely redeem themselves with uh, Deuce X and an Acronox, which both look pretty damn good. Cool. Yep. Cool. We, we'd love to get uh, get John Romero on the show. I want Todd Porter. He's more likely to speak. <laughs> okay, we'll laugh. <laughs> Go for the dirt there. Hey, guys, we have a, a, fe a weekly feature on the show um, we're going to step into right now because you happen to call in right about now. Um, you've heard of the game uh, Phantasmagoria 2? Yep. Yes. Or King's Quest 7? Yep. Yes. Several Sierra games. Uh, actually, our good friend and uh, designer on those projects, Ms. Lorelei Shannon, is on the phone. Lorelai. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Lorelai, this is uh, Ian. Ian. Uh, uh, Ian. <laughs> Ian and Ion, all in one word there. Ian, <laughs> uh, Herb, and Mario from um, Ensemble Studios. Hi, Laura. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you. Weekly, Lorelai brings us the refreshing gross fact of the week. Refreshing. That's <laughs> oh, a good, good term for this, this week, actually. Yes. So what do you have for us? Well, uh, here's a gross cycle by itself. Uh, I've been at Disneyland this past weekend. Ew! Oh, I, know. I, I took my two-year-old son. He thought it was the coolest thing on the planet, and okay, I did too. You know, Ooh. I went in the Pirates of the Caribbean 50 times, and the Haunted House 150 times. Now, did they actually uh, make the Pirates of the Caribbean more... Uh, um more PC, yes, PC, they did. Yeah, that's what yes, looking for. they did, actually. Remember the part where the pirates are chasing the chicks? Yeah. Well, now the chicks are carrying plates of food, so the pirates merely want their food. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, so what you're yeah. saying is the uh, pirates are kind of like our good buddy in the chat room, Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> would uh, be far more likely to chase them for the food. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Laura, we can barely pick you up here. Can you speak a little, a little bit closer to the phone? Sure, sure. Is that better? Oh, yeah. Okay, Much. okay. And the, the big scary woman that was chasing the, the two pirates, uh, she now has a rolling pin and they have food. <laughs> <laughs> Let me roll that out. It doesn't look right. It's definitely taking a turn for the more PC, but at least they have, still have the banner, take a winch for a bride, so I was happy about that. Okay, that's good. Sounds like the German version of pirates. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, I mean, there's food all over Disneyland. It's okay. just everywhere, and consequently there are birds all over Disneyland. Tons and tons and tons. Okay. You know, you got the pigeons and the starlings and the sparrows and all those guys, but I noticed something weird. You'd think with all this food around, all these popcorn and peanuts and everything, that, that you'd have at least a few mice and a few rats. Right? Well, there's the big one. Well, yeah, other than really, really big six-foot ones, there aren't any. None. And I started thinking about this, and I wondered where they are, and I finally decided that they're being eaten. <laughs> And, you know, I'm not sure if it's the, uh, the the guys in the costumes go a little bit mad and start grabbing up and gobbling mice with their little fat white gloves, or maybe it's institutionalized. There are worse things than hot dogs. But, uh, uh, but you know, is this going where I think it's going? There are thinking that you don't believe me and no one would really eat a rat. I have with me a menu selection from a Chinese restaurant oh, no. called Zhu Lu, which translates out to super deer. I have no idea <laughs> what that has to do with anything. And is this local? No, it's actually in China. Okay. And uh, this restaurant specializes in rats. And now, <laughs> I'll read you uh, tonight's special selection. <clears throat> okay. okay. We have rat with chestnut and duck, lotus seed rat stew, black bean rat, deep fried <laughs> lemon rat. <laughs> that was a southwestern rat. <laughs> rat with potatoes and onions, braised rat with roast pork and garlic, snakes and rat. Here comes my favorite. A pair of rats wrapped in lotus leaves <laughs> and rat satay with vermicelli. Mm. By the way, those of you who don't know, satay is oriental shish kebab. So, yes, that is a rat on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so it does belong in our, our amusement park. It does. It does. I think they could make some money that way. Maybe they already are. We're just not sure. Rat wow. bay! <laughs> rat tot! Now, see, the British Special Air Services, the commandos, they're forced to eat rats to survive when they're in training, and that's like a punishment. So they should have just got a bunch of ties. You know. And uh, they'd do the job and, and thank them for the rats. That would have worked. Now, what, did they just go around in the, in the gutter scooping up rats or what? <laughs> they'll stick to them. Oh, there's a big fat one. They did it. Get that one. <laughs> what are these ranch-raised rats? 
Yes. Grain fed? What, yes? These were range fed rats. <laughs> they actually are. They, a review of the restaurant praised them for having their range fed, clean, nice, clean, healthy rats. Free range rat. And politically Crazy. correct, too. Politically correct, free range rats. We don't abuse all rats. But the yeah. Chinese seem to be a tad torn about their attitudes on rats. Uh, here's a, a headline from a Chinese newspaper. Watching popular newsroom sitcom is like swallowing putrid rats. Well, that'd be a putrid rat, though. Uh, yeah, that's true. There are rats and there's putrid rats. Fresh rat. I rats. hope they don't have veal rats that they grow in little boxes. <laughs> that would be so sad. Yeah, that'd be Poor little rat. Poor little rat. I find this very close to cannibalism. I really like rats, personally. <laughs> I would never eat a rat. Humans, yes. Rats, no. Well, <laughs> thank you, Lorelai, for uh, bringing us that uh, very welcome. delicious, tasty tidbit there. And we are talking to three guys from uh, who live in Texas and the Southwest. So, and uh, the rats are big. The rats are big, and they taste like chicken. And they, they taste, taste like, like chicken. chicken. And if you want to get the gross fact of the week in your very own inbox, you guys want to write want to write this down. You can go up to onelist.com. That's o n e l i s t dot com and sign up for the list called G F O T W for <laughs> Growth Growth back back the week. There you have it. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your dinner. <laughs> Thank you, Lorelai. Hope you're not too traumatized by Disneyland. Oh, well, I'm, I'm still a little traumatized. I, I don't know. I'm still having flashbacks. <laughs> I think I, I don't know. I think I need to go watch a horror movie or two. You need to start thinking about building a theme park with your touch. You know, Ooh. I really think that they need the entire Nightmare Before Christmas land. That's oh, yeah. I think that's just what they need. I think so. Okay. Well, let's start a petition. I... Great idea. <laughs> okay, next thing, Dan, we need to get somebody from Disney on the show and uh, talk about the uh, Night Before, Before Christmas exhibit. Excellent. Yeah, he's nodding his head like, yeah. the bastard child of Disney. They, they seem to deny its existence. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's a lot of those. Yeah, I imagine. All right, thanks, Lorelai. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. You know what? I forgot to do something at the top of the hour. Yeah, I know we have another caller on, but I, I kind of got to take care of business here. The, the one net segment. That oh, the good. bill paying part. The bill paying okay. part. As you know, as, you know that OneNet is our, our sponsor. Maybe we can talk to these guys into putting Age of Empires 2 on OneNet instead of the zone. Yeah, that'll oh, happen. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure. We got more money than Gates. Oh, uh, sure. Why right not? In my pocket. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you believe that, I've got a rat sorbet I want to sell you. Okay, <laughs> this week on OneNet. Uh, there's a blurb sheet from here. Um, hmm. It says TV Land Online to launch Ultimate Fan Search Home Version. Uh, TV Land Ultimate Fan Search is going digital. On August 30th, TVLand.com will launch the Ultimate Fan Search home version. Now, you know how I feel about using the word ultimate and all these catchphrases. That means you can only do one. You can't do one after it. Otherwise, the first one was an ultimate. They what? should say penultimate. Penultimate. It means it's the ultimate pen. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Players can compete for tons of classic TV goodies and a chance to win $1,000 a trip for two to L.A. and a spot on the TV Land Ultimate Fan Search Finals. Log on to www.tvland.com forward slash ultimate underscore fan forward slash index dot 10. Go to tvland.com. You can find it. Okay, what else is going on? Oh, this is cool. We um, interviewed the guys from Relic a couple of weeks ago that are doing Homeworld. And OneNet is putting up, uh, in partnership with Sierra Studios and Liquid Audio and eTown.com, they're putting up the song by Yes that Yes made especially for Homeworld. Apparently the uh, band members from Yes knew somebody and liked the game so much they wrote a song <laughs> for Homeworld. Although I don't know if this is one. This is a download from the new Yes album, The Ladder. The song Lightning Strikes is featured in the upcoming release of Homeworld. And uh, you can get it for no charge. Just go to OneNet. And uh, look for the, the link to go and download that. That's kind of cool. What what band is it? Yes. Uh, we, we're doing the whole who's on first yeah. thing. Back when I just well, you're do doing it. it by yourself. Usually it takes two. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to encourage you. <laughs> I'm not afraid of doing things by myself. That's why I wear the glasses. OneNet is proud to welcome Joe Andrews, a renowned expert at mini card and board games, and is now a member of the OneNet family. He'll be authoring regular articles on cribbage, spades, and hearts. Uh, Joe Anders is the author of Win at Hearts and Win at Spades, Volume 1 and 2. His many credits include three National Hearts Championships, one National Spades Championship, and numerous regional and local tournaments. And he's won a lot of those, too. Boy, here's somebody with a lot of spare time. Uh, check out OneNet again, uh, Game Rooms Hoyle, for all of his wisdom. And that's it from the world of OneNet. Yes, sucking up to the sponsors once again. Hey, all right. You know, we should get... You guys know anybody over at Microsoft that want to sponsor us? And... <laughs> yeah, we need more than one because we've got to talk to Jeremy already tonight. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a good start. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Take okay, a couple more calls. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. You can do that. Watch it. Watch this call list. Yeah, I'll bring back my old Texas accent to do some monster truck promos or something. Be careful what you ask for. Watch this. Hi, who's this? Hello? Oh. Uh, <laughs> we had someone on. And I was going to be really cool and bring him in, and, and he hung up. <laughs> they were holding for like 40 minutes. Well, what do they want? This is a talk show. I know. Like, snap them in anywhere? We have schedules to keep. This is a professional show. <laughs> this is not some slacker slap together operation here. We've got some real stuff in here. Watch. I got a sound effects board. Check this out. We got... We're on a mission from God. <laughs> this is a professional outfit here. Paul, would you pull it together? We have hosts. We have we have guests that are waiting to be interviewed. <laughs> I told you to get him coffee, but you wouldn't listen to me, Nemoc. And now I'm, I'm running way over, over part here. And <sighs> I feel better now. I feel cleansed. All right. How you guys doing? This, you coming along okay? Great. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't think this is totally whacked for you, isn't it? You want to talk uh, about no, the game we store? live in a pretty strange world ourselves. So <laughs> we'll get your your game makers. <laughs> so uh, yeah, well, let's let's talk more about the zone. We were talking about that a little bit, and I just brought up the subject again, trying to suck up for a major sponsor. Um, so the zone is really good for you for uh, Age of Empires One. Yeah. And, How many uh, people are playing on the zone at any one time doing AOE? You beat me by that much, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I don't have fair numbers every now and then. Uh, you know, I I can't give you some kind of scientific answer to it, but I know that every now and then someone sends a little message around when we first hit the age and said, hey, you know, you have to go out to the zone and see this. We're beating spades or whatever right now. Wow. So, <laughs> so you go out there every now and then and there's like 4,000 people playing the game. And it's wow. It's crazy feeling, but um, I haven't been out there personally in the last... Well, when did Age 2 start? <laughs> <laughs> there are 10,000 people a night playing Age of Empire. We, we can wing it. If you don't have stats, you can all just make stuff up. Uh, it's, it, I mean, we get <laughs> pretty good numbers then. <laughs> 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 so, you know, when you're the developer, you don't spend too much time going out there and finding people outside to play because, you know, you work on this game for two years and you figure you have a head start on everyone and then a week after it gets released, some 13-year-old from Iowa is trouncing you in every game that you play. <laughs> and they have so much more time than you do. It's not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the fun out. <laughs> well, I kind of started on this earlier. Um, what are you doing for uh, to like build a community for uh, for the game? Is it uh, strictly going to be on the zone? Are there going to be rogue servers? Are there, are there fan sites happening all over the place? Um, what kind of community is shaping up? We have, a, we have a ton of fan sites. Um, I remember when we when we just got done and put Age 1 in the box and sent it out, somebody sent me an email and said, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be the first guy that has the Age 2 site. And this is before we, <laughs> before we even announced it. And he already had the, the URL up and everything, and, and they had a little page and under construction. That's very, uh, <laughs> you very good proud kind of guy. You should be proud that you're keeping these people off the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really... Um, we didn't get to do as much with Age 2 as we wanted to to, to build community. We have a... We have a bunch of people here that work um, on making ties w with our fans and with, uh, you know, providing them with the kind of stuff they need to build sites and and uh, encouraging them and stuff. You know, because it's, it's, they they do provide a service for us. They like our game. They they get our name out there, and uh, uh, so we would do what we can to support them. But uh, we're really looking at a bunch of options that we can do to kind of make RTS games have a little bit more of a community feel, the way first-person shooters they have a community kind of feel. Well, the other thing that uh, the fans provide with these kind of games, or any community actually, and we've mentioned it before today on today's show, is they give you that outside eye. Right. I mean, you guys are, are so close to the the product and so much on the inside that it's really easy to miss some pretty simple stuff that a, a, a regular Joe who picks up the box yep. is going to pick up right away. Mm -hmm. That happens to us constantly. I mean, we we have our we have our little group of guys here. Well, little we have 40 guys that play test here pretty constantly. And uh, you know, we you, when you play with the same guys over and over, you, you do fall into a rut. And then we'll drag somebody from the outside in and have him play our best player, and he tries some strategy that's so off the wall we'd never thought of it. And you know, we, we when we released it uh, when we released the first like pre-beta to what we were calling our alpha group. I'll, I'll just keep throwing these words in there. Uh, when oh, we, sure. When we put that out, those guys, in the period of maybe three or four days, found two dozen, three dozen bugs. There was oh. stuff that we had never, that we had never seen before. We didn't anticipate it at all. So it's been very valuable to us. We get a ton of feedback from the, from fans on the outside, and they're invaluable to us. And this is another reason why, no matter how much a game is tested, once you get it out to the public, you know, bugs are always found. 
I mean, the developers are, are on the inside of the game, of course. You can do all the testing you want. But, you know, once you get it in the hands of, of literally millions of people and millions of eyeballs, they'll always find something else. Right. Yeah. And, uh... You have to steal yourself against that. <laughs> you can never test for the kind of stuff that happens when someone drops, you know, three buildings down, deletes one building, hits the space key and the period key at the same time, and all of a sudden a car shows up. And you just can't test for that kind of stuff. It just happens. That's the Knight Rider feature. I, I noticed yeah. that you really went after the really obvious stuff. For instance, it looks like you've gone through great lengths to prevent the Archer Rush or some other similar, uh, you know, five-minute-and-it's-over tactic. <laughs> <laughs> we replaced it with the uh, infantry rush. <laughs> oh, <sweet. laughs> Give me that tip. So it's different. <laughs> <laughs> so now um, you've got garrison units, which never existed before, and that's uh, so what brought that idea into play. The rush. <laughs> <laughs> well, such a change, though. We were we were sitting here the other day when somebody. It, you can still do a rush in H two. We we decided that it was a valid strategy that, you know, if, if somebody is a good enough player that they can pull off a rush, they they ought to get something for it. We didn't want to kill it outright and force everybody to wait to a certain period. You know, if we kill the rush outright, then people just wait till the late game, and it's not that exciting because then you don't have any interaction with anybody in the game. So we didn't want to kill it. We just wanted to make it more difficult to do, and having the garrison made it more difficult. You know, you can stick your villagers in there and you can fend off someone coming in to rush you. You can still do it if you're a good player. If, if you play your cards right and come in there, you can pull off a rush. But we've been playing with that for so long. We go back and look at age every now and then, you know, for one reason or another. We were watching it the other day after playing a game. I'm like, how did we ever play this game when someone rushed you and not able to garrison any of your units? You know, <laughs> what did you do? And, and none of us could remember what the game was like before that. I remember. I was running. <laughs> it was pretty obvious. Well, <laughs> well, you kind of tried to do something about it in the expansion pack, uh, uh, Rise of Rome, uh, where you had some new units, like uh, uh, your your slingers, that sort of thing. That that probably helped a little bit, but you can still rush. Right. Uh, but I, I noticed there's a lot of changes uh, in, in Age 2 that probably will discourage that. For one thing, you have a town bell now, which is a... I mean, that's way out there. It's a pretty radical idea for an RTS game. You ring the town bell, and your, your peons go running back into the... Uh, town center and defend it. Now that's that's kind of unique. Where'd that come from? <clears throat> well, the it can it was born of the fact that even if you have the garrison ability to defend yourself when someone rushes you, you're still at a disadvantage because they send their troops in and they force you to garrison and when you're garrison, of course, you're not gathering any resources. And on top of that, once you chase them away and you have to send your guys back to work, it takes you a couple minutes to go and how many guys did I have on trees? How many guys did I have on food? How many guys did I have on, you know, uh, it, it, you lose some time, and it, it, it breaks your stride when you're trying to get guys back on there. So when you click to ungarrison, to untown all those guys, they automatically go back to work where you where they had been assigned before. So it it takes, you know, we have a micromanagement concept in the game, and we felt that we could break a micromanagement concept to get rid of micromanagement that wasn't fun. And this <laughs> is something that we thought wasn't fun, trying to figure out how many guys I had on wood, how many were on stone. Well, that's one thing that always made me crazy about uh, this type of game was... The micromanagement. I mean, you have to be jumping all over the screen mm -hmm. to make sure this person goes there or they pop out and or you create something and then you have to assign them. And being able to set that stuff up in advance is uh, makes it a lot more fun for me. Uh, I like this kind of game, but I, I played Warcraft about halfway through before I lost interest. And uh, I tried to play Warcraft uh, online, multiplayer. And I lost interest really fast because it became a game of whoever builds the fastest and click the fastest won. Yeah. And uh, then when StarCraft came out, using um, you could build things. Well, you know, set up. Okay, I want to build five of these things. You have to keep going back and building. <laughs> so, um, so that's great. That's uh, it's good to hear. I I may actually play this one. <laughs> um, to extensively, the I didn't get to play Age of Empires a lot. Uh, yeah, if you can get Paul to play this game, this will be a first. Because you know, Paul just does games professionally. If you pay him, he plays. Otherwise, forget about it. Which is why I don't get paid to play games for a lot. <laughs> but uh, that's one thing that that made me crazy about the game and um, about a lot of these games. So it's uh, that's good, really good news. We did a lot of other things to mitigate that kind of stuff too. Like uh, I think someone mentioned uh, how they hated having villagers that would. You know, they gather all the wood that was in an area, and then they just stand around. And they have a, we added a larger source radius to the villagers now, so if there's another source of wood in the immediate area, um, they'll go and automatically start gathering from it. Great. Right. What about um, things like waypoints and stuff like that to set? Yeah, we have a waypoint system, and we have a buy building waypoint system in the, in the game, and a buy unit waypoint system in the game. So you can take a building and you can assign them. We also have, for you, we were talking about counter-rush things, you have the ability to put a waypoint actually on top of a building. 
And if you put it on top of the building, then as your units are built, they'll, they'll stay inside the building. So if someone's rushing your town, instead of building you know, one, one unit at a time and send them, sending them out there to be killed, you can build up a force of 10, kick them out, and then go on, on the attack. Oh. Wow, that's, uh, yeah, because I've had people picked off, you know, a really Lord and they're dead. Yeah. So that's great. Hey, you guys want to take a couple more calls? Sure. Great, let's bring one on in. Hi, welcome to the Game Dive. Who's this? This is Casey. Hey, Casey, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing just great. Great. Uh, would you like a light beer or would you like the, the dark beer tonight? I'm going for the dark. Okay, so I'm going to pull him up on a dark beer. <laughs> What do you got for us? Hey, I, I, I've been uh, re reading around the web and stuff on some rumors. Uh, what, what's up with the possibility of H3 coming out? Or maybe even some uh, H2 uh, extra packs there? Uh, well, <laughs> I've heard it both ways, so I'm kind of kind of interested. You can't talk too much about what we're going to do after this. H2 isn't out yet. Yeah, we're finishing up H2 as it is, but uh, those things both sound like things that might happen in the future. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Hey, uh, I got to tell you, uh, I, I'm one of the lucky uh, beta, beta testers, and uh, this is the first time I was exposed to the multiplayer. And that, that thing is just like a drug. I have <laughs> AOE and RO, ROR, and I tell you, I, I uh, never exposed myself to the zone and playing that online, and it is just like a drug. You're just exposing yourself favorite. all over the place, aren't you? Hey, it's great. <laughs> you know, Casey, it sounds like, I know, check me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like you're, you're like, trying to get comfortable or something. Are you sitting well, in a big Barca lounger there waiting to... Well, no, I've I got a, a back injury here recently, oh. so, so it's, i got to kind of try to shift, you know? Oh. Actually, the picture that I used to make that one that's on the left window there is, is of Casey. That's Casey? That's Casey. Casey with my face on him, wow. Hey, no, wait a minute, I don't have no underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, move on to the next one. Thanks for playing. Good night, everybody. <laughs> That's a metal picture we just didn't need there, Casey. Hey, great job on the on, on the game. I really, really enjoy it. Thanks, hey, thanks Casey. for being a tester, man. Hey, you bet. That, man. Thanks, Casey. Hey. They're calling us naked now. Now, I know this game will have big promise if Bill Gates calls in, but we'll just hold our <laughs> breath and wait. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that, that I'm real curious about is, is that in H2, each civilization now has at least one unique unit. And that's got to really complicate the game balance for you guys. What, is, uh, what has that been like? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> um, it was a lot of testing. It was, a, it was a good idea when we started. I still think it's a good idea, but, I mean, it, it was a much more attractive idea when we, when we first started saying, what do we want to do with H2? Hey, how about a unique unit for every single Civ? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, it sounds really <laughs> good. I for a little while, I'm like, who came up with this crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> but it really, it really helps to add. Um, uh, one of the things that we did with the, the Civ balance, in H2 was to make it less, in, in H1, if someone picked a certain Civ, you knew what you were up against. You knew exactly what that person was doing. And there wasn't a whole lot of flexibility for a person to, you know, play the Egyptians and do something other than monks. So one of the things we did with the cultures was to kind of divorce that from them. And, and the cultures are a little bit more, you're, you're capable to pick different strategies with different cultures. And uh, it leaves you a little bit more open for a good player to figure out ways to, to work with what he's given to make what he wants to have happen happen. Well, the unique units uh, offer a little bit more distinction between the civs now that we've kind of muddied the waters between just the bonuses. If you can pull it off, it's going to be a huge asset. But of course, if the game balance doesn't come out just right, it's not going to be as playable as the first one. That's what I'll tell you. What that's uh, one of the things that I'm scared about is we, <laughs> we just uh, we, you know before we put Age One out, we we got all these all these death threat kind of letters from people. So you're ruining the game because the archers do this much damage or move this fast, and they they have these this myriad arguments about why we had done everything wrong and why we we're stupid. And uh, <laughs> now Age Two is coming out, and all these people that had all these complaints about H1, which was a very successful game, uh, we're getting email from them or seeing posts on, on Usenet from them and say things like, well, this is a really balanced game. <laughs> it's really, really That's really frightening not to have these people complaining about what we've done. That is scary. But it's only in the game business where you can sell two million games and then get hate mail because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much unique. Now, if you go to uh, GameSpot.com, they've been running down uh, one by one, each of the new civilizations. So anyone wants to take a look at what the new civs are in this game, that's all you have to do is go to GameSpot.com and see their rundown. Not that that's a plug form, but uh, what I want to know is, <laughs> what are what are the units and civilizations that you decided not to go with? 
Oh my goodness, Swede. The rejects. <laughs> yeah, none, none of those Swedes or anything like that, you know. <laughs> so the Brooklyn says out of there. Off the top of my head, some of the units that we that we dropped out of there for <laughs> some for reasons that I can't even remember anymore. We had a siege tower kind of thing, which was um, a tower that would let you could. It was mobile and it would roll up to the walls, and you could run a villager up over a wall instead of having to poke a hole in the wall or run a unit through there. It was basically a temporary hole in somebody's wall. We had uh, some more gunpowder units. We had some kind of obscure Chinese weapons that uh, we didn't think anybody was going to have any idea of what they were. <laughs> and attack them with the Chinese basket thingy uh, or something. Yeah, the Chuko Nu was a pretty obscure thing for to ask people to, to accept, and I, I, it only made it through because it's pretty cool to have an archer that, you know, fires semi-automatic <laughs> arrows. <laughs> <laughs> the Tommy um, arrow. The Chinese could have those those ridiculous finger cuffs that you just can't get. Out. <laughs> <laughs> the finger fossils. Yeah. You throw those into a garrison. <laughs> and like, Ooh, look at this. Oh, no, I can't get out. Uh, how do you fire? I mean, anti-archer unit <laughs> you can right get there. To wonder that way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a, a couple more callers here. You guys want to pick one up? And also, is Agent Akit? Agent Akit? Akit. Akit. Agent Akit wanted me to say his name on the air, so I did. <laughs> Age and Akit. A Agent Akit. H no and the kit. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, thank you. Hang on a second. They're going to force me to tell <laughs> the uh, Sofa King story, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever heard of them? Yes. The yes Sofa, Sofa Kings are the uh, are the dev team from Dynamics that, that did Tribes. And, you know, like a dummy, I watched them playing on the uh, ladder for uh, months and never realized what the name was all about. And then I realized, okay, their names are like drunk, stupid, tired. And then I th I'm thinking Sofa King. So they lay around uh, all day long drinking beer on the couch. Sofa King. Sofa King drunk. Sofa King tired. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it really it took months to figure that out. Oh, man. Why we're thankful we're unregulated. That gives you an idea what dev people are like, folks. Hey, let's go ahead and uh, bring one more caller in. Hey, welcome to the game dive. Who's this? It's Marcel Marceau. Wow, thanks for calling there. Another Hi, who's mine. this? Hey, this is Washizu. Washizu. Wait, this sounds familiar. <laughs> w weren't you just... Didn't you call in earlier? Yeah, I called in earlier, but... I think so. Are, are you really lonely? Uh, no. Do you need someone to talk to? He just... He drank his beer. He needs another one, dude. <laughs> well, bring up a 32-ounce uh, Guinness over here for this guy. We'll take care of him. That sounds good. Hey, what's up? Well, um, one thing I wanted to ask you guys about, something that hasn't... It's been kind of, like, hinted at, you know, on the fan sites and whatnot, but... About the team bonuses, you guys want to comment on any of those? Team bonuses? Team bonuses are, are in multiplayer, right? Right. Yeah. We added a concept of team bonuses where each team has a bonus that it shares with other the other members of the team. So uh, the concept behind this was, one, it adds a little bit more of a dynamic to, you know, we were talking about community building and, and multiplayer and team play and that kind of thing. And it, it adds another level for people to sit down and, and say, well, we could take these two civs and, and play, you know, you play the Chinese and I'll play the Goths and you play the Tutons and then we'll get this, this, and this. And it allows people to, it encourages that kind of team strategy where if everybody gets together and they make this decision about what sieves they want to use in the game, and then they make the best decisions for how they can use those bonuses, it brings everybody a little bit closer to, to using some kind of teamwork. Uh, another thing that it does, or that we hope that it does, is we saw a lot in H1 where, um, for one reason or another, play kind of degenerated into you know one of basically four sieves that were the only sieves that people wanted to play. And uh, we did a number of things to fix that, but one of the things that we did was add these in so that now if you're on a team and you all pick the same sieve you only get one sieve bonus whereas the team that you're fighting against if they pick four sieves they get four sieve bonuses so mm. you know it's, if you pick the four different ones and we think it's much more interesting for people to have to, to play games where you have eight unique sieves competing in the game and it's a little bit more fluid and this will affect uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be ladder system and uh, stuff like that for teams or, or not well, people set up. Uh, I'm sure the zone has a, will have a ladder system, has a ladder system, and I'm sure people will set up their own independent ladders. There's nothing in the game that that uh, supports it innately, but but it will be there. Yes, the fans want it. It will be there. <laughs> now I've got to ask one that's going to drive you guys nuts because I know you don't like to answer this and you hate it, and that's why I got to bring it up. <laughs> that's 3D job. artwork. Now uh, we've got an artist right here, so I just can't resist. You guys are doing uh, 2Ds with sprites, and they're really beautiful, as was the first one, but you've even pushed it further. How much further can you go before you got to go 3D? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, right now, we're you know just trying to finish this one, trying to get this one out the door and get everything done and tied off and pretty much all the art's done, but 
for 3D, uh, there's a lot out there that you can do in 3D. Um, <laughs> we haven't done it yet, so it's 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 going to be a challenge for us. It's going to be something different. Um, uh, as one of the artists here, uh, one of the big first artists, not many of us have ever done games before, so we don't have very many people have done 3D art before. Uh, Was it a consideration? Um, is it a consideration? Or was it for uh, H2? Um, not for H2. I think H2 was always going to be um, the sprite game. Um, you know, there might have been some talk real, real early about it for a day or two, but for the most part, it was, you know, look at what we can do, and you know, can we do this, and can we do it in 3D, and can we, you know, can we do the same quality that we wanted in H1 and, and make it better? And at the time that we started H2, I don't think that we could achieve that quality. I don't think that the you know 3D stuff out there was able to allow us to do that. Um, to us, it's a more realistic look um, that we want than than just you know high end tech cool stuff. Um, although now that the 3D engines are starting to get up there to support it um, from the art team side, you know, I'm, I'm sure the programmers are always wanting us to do 3D and do that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking but, PR but art, and marketing. Yeah, yeah the art be all team, over you. Yeah, but from the art team side, it's, you know, it's now it's like, well, you know, now that you can su support it, we can do cool things in there, you know, it's, it's more interesting to us. And one of the cool things about Ensemble is, you know, the whole company has somewhat of a say in what we do, and, and it's not driven by just one person. and and one vision it's you know everybody gets to say and so with the art team and that you know we want to do 3d i'm sure it's going to be in the future sometime but um you know there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of cool stuff in there and you know with 3d and i think we're going to do it eventually one day and by the time that comes out then uh, everybody's going to have the kind of machine that will also be able to support it without uh, having a bunch of crashes and a bunch of problems right Right. I think it's just, you know, it was, it looked at age one and, and you know, the, the programmers, I'm sure, were, were the ones that brought it up that first day and said, hey, let's do a 3D. And and um, and then we just looked at it and really thought about it and said, you know, well, I mean, come on, we can still make a really fun game that's really great and have great art and great everything. And just because the units don't move up and down the train, and that's basically <laughs> what they were doing at that point, you know, just units moving up and down the train. That's all 3D was offering, you know, two years ago. Yeah, now you could do really cool fog of right. war or something like that right now that now that the engines have gotten so much better and you know so much more technology is out there and the hardware supporting it so much better then you know now it's like okay yeah maybe we can do some cool stuff but even maybe. if you do next to nothing in 3d you know your marketing people are going to be yelling at you that if you put 3d on the box even if there's nothing in there you sell more copies. Uh, yes yes i just yes. put 3d there's, on there and tell it's your apartment number there's a million people out there with s3 verges that don't realize that everything they're running isn't in 3d it's in software <laughs> mode but, but they see 3d in the box they buy it you wouldn't believe how many times we got asked that at E3. Yeah. Give me three. Well, hey, we're going to grab uh, grab another break and be back in a couple more minutes uh, talking more about Age of Empires 2 and uh, what else might be coming up for Ensemble Studios. This is a game dive. Uh, welcome back to the game dive. Uh, we're having a great time here with the uh, the gang from Ensemble Studios. We've got, I, I think I've had too much to drink, Paul. I'm getting a little woozy here. <laughs> yeah, when we play music like that, we, we will. But then we play Shatner. Who are we to say? <laughs> And we like him. Uh, yeah, that's really weird. Hey, I was just um, off the air talking to the, to the guys, trying to do um, <clears throat> find out when this thing's going to be out. Got a little bit left in the show here. When yeah, you guys... Did you uh, put a lamp in their face and slap them a couple of times? <laughs> I got yeah, once or twice. But uh, got Ian slapped back, man. That was something. Uh, what the... wait, dude. Stay out of the way. Oh, when, uh, when do you think it's going to go? Uh, it should be on shelves by October. Ooh. Wow, a firm answer, October. By October or sometime, you know. Well, I did say should. Uh, <laughs> it, would be, it would be in October, not before, but in. Oh. <laughs> during the month of. Oh, yeah, during the month of. They're not saying what year, though. We might have to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> Our anniversary is Halloween. We might have to have you back for an anniversary show and see how it's going once it launches. Yeah, yeah. that would be cool. That would be very cool. And we'd yeah. love to have you back on to talk about it. Ben, while on the same subject, we want to plug... Probably one of the coolest websites out there that's a fan site, which is uh, HTTP colon slash slash ageofkings.com, and that's Washizu's site. And uh, that's, that's a good place to get maps and other information. You name it. Go get it. Go get that stuff. Hey, guys, game for a couple more calls? Sure. Yeah, sure. Let's bring him on in. Hi, welcome to the Game Dive. That'll be a 450 cover. Hello? Hello. I always freak people out with that. Hi, who's this? He only had three bucks. <laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Uh, Freeze. Freeze, how you doing? All right, what's uh, Ensemble Studios doing about wars? Pirating of uh, the beta? Uh, the, the where sites. 
Yeah. Oh, the ensemble, we don't actually handle any of that at all other than to uh, anytime somebody surfing around finds one of them, we, we ship it straight off to, to uh, Microsoft who unleashes their pack of lawyers on them. You know, you don't. If you're doing wear stuff for uh, off ensemble, don't. I mean, you do not want Microsoft lawyers knocking on your door. <laughs> <laughs> lawyers, well, more like pit bulls. <laughs> now, Freddie, you're not doing any of that, are you? Who me? Yeah, you. No, I'm official better tester. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. You, you <laughs> no, it's official. <laughs> you, you got that voice. You sound like one of them wears guys to me. You know that. that... <laughs> official beta tester. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, man. If you're, you're asking yeah. these questions, so I'm assuming you're asking for the good of the company. <laughs> you, mean, you mean the official beta that they're selling in Bulgaria right now on the shelf? <laughs> you know, that's that's actually not far from from the truth. We did we found out about uh, anybody. Rem- what country was it? Homeworld is now selling in Malaysia. Actually, and it's, one. And it's yeah. a good they, they, month they, off. They took the art out of one of the magazine shots for the for the cover, <laughs> made a box, and put uh, it was like an our E three version of it, and then they made birds and sold it. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, we actually got a copy of that sent to us. <laughs> <laughs> the bootleg. Version. Did they add anything you can use? <laughs> And the marketing guys are going, well, here it is. Let's ship this. We're sticking with that schedule. <laughs> Ooh, that looks right. Already got a cover. Right. We're going to make our deadlines and get bonuses here. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Well, thanks for calling, Freeze. All uh, right. Bye. Yeah, whatever. Bye, Freeze. Bye. Freeze, yeah. Freeze tried for about 40 minutes to get in, and his phone kept cutting out. So I, wow. I think he probably is in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got one more call? Let's go ahead and bring him on in. Hi. Welcome to the Game Dive. Who's this? Is this me, Paul? It, it's who? This is Ranger X. Oh, no, it's me, Paul. Oh, it's Ranger X, who is one of my tribe's buddies. And, I, and I've got to say it, Reckless Abandon, somehow, because I wasn't there to play because I'm doing the show, yes. they won tonight against Black Lance, and they're now in the top ten <laughs> on the online gaming league. <laughs> Yay for us. I can't believe you won without me. I mean, how is that even possible? Um, Buck, it got the MVP for not showing up. Sweet. <laughs> That's like my third one in a row. Uh, <sighs> my question is... You kind of touched on it already, but it was about the, the individual play balance for the for the unit seems to be just excellent, but the race balance doesn't seem doesn't seem to be so good. My mm-hmm. question is, with this many different civilizations, how do you go about giving them each a special characteristic um, and still be creative? It seems like you've got to come up with a lot of different special characteristics for them. Yeah, you do have to come up with a lot of them, and it also takes. I mean, uh, just that aspect of the game alone. Uh, we Microsoft had groups of guys that were that had played hundreds and hundreds of games together until they figured that they could uh, they could pretty much call these people even, and then they ran passes on Civ versus Civ tests. I mean, can't, they played probably a dozen, um, you know, of every Civ against every other Civ, and and sent us back a nice big chart that pointed out, you know, what percentage the Goths won over the Teutons or or whatnot. Um, what we found with a lot of the uh, culture balancing is that after a ton of testing, um, some of the ones that are seen as weak are ones that take a little bit more finesse to play. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the monks. Like, like let's um, look at the Persians. They don't seem to have too many military advantages. Right. They can farm real well, but okay, so I've got some food. I'm getting my butt kicked. Okay, yeah, that's but that's you don't go hungry. <laughs> because that's all I play is the Persians. Oh, really? And to me, the Persians, and I'm the kind of player that steps back, and um, Ian gets on one side of me, and Dave Pottinger gets on the other side of me, and they protect me halfway through the game, and by the end of the game, I have 30 elephants, and then the game's mine. And um, you know, it's 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 a it's a unit. It's a it's a sieve that they're all played differently. You know, and, and people play them different ways. And for me, that's my way of playing. It's it's um, sit back a little bit, build up, and then be able to play later on in the game with a bigger force. That's just devastating. I can play through the whole game with a little bit of stuff, but I love the devastating factors. So I let Ian and them do all the fighting in the beginning, and I just sit back there and build these elephants, and then you can just run through. Are you saying it's fun. a race? It's a race that can't stand on its own and needs something else to protect it. And so it gets the end game? Combined uh, arms. Well, no, 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 no. I, I think he's asking if, if, you know, say a three-on-three game. Could you play them you on your own? Play, do you, could you play them one-on-one? Uh, uh, you know, I think that 
I think that that's something that we're really we're really not going to be able to fully know until it gets out there and, and right. we get it into the hands of 2,000 expert players who right. shake everything loose on it. I mean, we're, they're we've tested like you've never seen before, anyways. Right. Yeah, we, we've tested the different. living daylights out of out of out of the Civ on Civ stuff, and and we think that we we did a really good job of of getting these guys pretty even. But there are some that are better in certain aspects of the game. So if you're going to, I mean, obviously, if you're playing a three on three game and you're playing with a mixture, you're playing with uh, pretty even players and you're playing with a mixture of Civs, the balance is really good because uh, you know where something's strong something else is weak so everything kind of fits together it's where you're playing one-on-one -on -one games that you're going to find um, big gaping holes in the balance and the thing is some sieves to have you know to have more of a characteristic uh, say they're good on a water map well then you can't apply a, a sieve that's really good on a on a water map but isn't so good on a land map in a land map game and expect it to do as well so there are there are times when you'll pick one sieve over another based on game conditions and there's really no way that we can make every single sieve applicable for every kind of you know map and every kind of map size and every you know player matchup that, that's possible in the game we're, we're we're doing everything we can to make them that's one of the things that makes it so cool and has such a I'm still playing. This is the only multiplayer game that I've, I've got a five computer network at home. It's the only multiplayer game we've played on the network. <laughs> still. Yeah. Uh, or AOE was, pardon me, not AOE too, but AOE still is. And it's, it's got a lot of playability because the units are so different and they're different on every map. So if I'm in a highland map, I'll probably play a different civilization than I would on a, on a, you know, on a small island map or something. Right. Do you think that's one of the things that adds to it? Is it one, I'm sorry, one of the things that what? Do you think that since the races are so different and they they work well on different types of terrain. Do you think that's one of the things that things that adds to the longevity and playability of the? Uh, oh, oh, definitely. Yeah. One of the, I mean, one of the things we wanted to break between age one and age two was that in age one we did have a lot of that diversity, but one of the problems was uh, certain techniques came about that were pretty much unstoppable in almost any condition. And to us, that really ruins the game because, you know, it's like the, the CNC tank rush where there's you're going to play a game and if you want to win, you're just going to do this one thing or you're going to get together with a group of people that, uh, you know, that are your friends and you're going to say, okay, nobody makes cav archers in this game or, you know, we're going to play on a certain kind of map. Nobody builds a wonder or whatever. So one of the things we wanted to do in H2 was make sure that that wasn't the case. And so we tried to make some kind of off-the-wall kind of civ bonuses in here to give people tools to, to kind of make their own strategies so that, you know, if someone gets into using this one strategy over and over and over, there's a really strong counter to that strategy. You know, if, if, if six months from now it turns out that, that we made infantry too strong in this game and they're dominating the game, somebody can start playing the Byzantines who have this big bonus against the, the infantry and they can wipe somebody out who's who's using that technique. Well, that kind of self-balances things. Well, that's a pretty lofty goal. No one's ever come up with a game, an RTS game, that you can't build a lot of a certain type of unit and just rush. That, I, that, at least not that I know of. That was another. That's that's, an, that's another goal that we had for H2. Is what uh, I, I mean. You can still play the game building one unit, and uh, depending on how you handle your economy, if you pump out one unit and attack somebody with huge masses of any one thing, you'll you'll still do well. But a guy that does combined arms will yeah. beat you any day of the week. Yeah. Because there's always a, a way to come uh, to counteract one thing. Right. Right. Now you mentioned uh, one of the um, <clears throat> the peoples you can make were, were the Goths. Right. Now, I, when the second you said that, all I could picture was some really pale people in black clothes. <laughs> Hang out only at night. Hang out only at night. Pack them during the day while they're sleeping, folks. That's the strap <laughs> right there. <laughs> Playing, you know, throwing a bunch of um, ballet CDs. And, right. <laughs> and they usually have arms at about the thickness of my little finger. <laughs> Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're it's plus not plus. actually those guys. Oh, oh. damn! Because that would be fun to roll over with an elephant. That'd be great. <laughs> but that's in the cheat code. I was really looking forward to kicking some goth ass <laughs> without having to go to Milwaukee and Gen Con for a change. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ranger X, thanks for the call. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, Rob, thanks for not showing up for the game tonight. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can pay me later for helping me out. <laughs> All right, hey, it was great to talk to you guys. It's nice to be a Ranger fan. Thanks, man. Bye. I have played Ranger X at AOE a million times, and I'll tell you right now, all he's got is this. He keeps building new cities all over the map every time you kick his ass. <laughs> In the last one, he's already building another one somewhere else. You can never get rid of him. He's a virus. <laughs> he's a virus he's player. He's fungus. Yeah. In the end, he's attacking with like a hundred archers. That's that's how he does it. Keep what if this unit on the board and just start 
grinding them out. You, know, you mentioned building uh, one big thing and going after it. I'm reading uh, in the notes here that uh, the castle can build the unique unique unit and the trebuchet. Yeah. Trebuchet. Trebuchet. I love trebuchets. The arm of God. Ever since I uh, <laughs> saw that episode of Northern Exposure where they threw the piano. <laughs> it's just that a great deal of your customers probably can't say trebuchet. That's no, they're saying uh, trebuchet. Yeah. Trebuchet. I need one of those treb buckets. <laughs> For a bucket of trevet people. Now, so, another cool feature you guys added that I'm curious about. You know, you've got farming and hunting as ways of, of gathering food and berry picking. Now you got shepherding? Sheep. Sheep. <laughs> now, where where did that come from? Is this like a comment on your boss? Or? Well, you know, it's fun. <laughs> oh, you wee beauty. I love it when you talk dirty to me like that, you wee beauty. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are down in Texas. Can we get that sound? (laughs) Can you send us that sound? (laughs) That's that's not me. (laughs) Put her away, man. Jeez. So besides the uh, the sheep uh, liberty factor, what other? We got a couple minutes left here. Um, What do you think is three of you? Three individuals. What do you think is the coolest thing you've added to AOE? Something you're really uh, proud of, really looking forward to. <laughs> there's a sheep again. <laughs> You're a lonely man. There's a, there's an awful lot to try to come up with. <laughs> Just one thing. Um, well, let's let let Mario say something then. Mario, what's your fave? Castles. Castles are very cool. Really? They're very strong defensive structures. They enable more defensive players to strategically take over the areas, control the gold mining areas. They're very important in deathmatch. They change deathmatch quite a bit, I think. And the, the fact that they garrison, protect, and heal, and train units as and heal as well makes them it's very very interesting. I think. Brand, that's where you get spies from too. Uh, I'm sorry. That's where you get spies from too. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Herb? Um, something that I think is cool about the game, or something I did cool in the game. Uh, something I your fave. Yeah, uh, my fave. I don't know. Um, probably the elephants now. <laughs> <laughs> You're this, this farm animal thing happening. I, I, <laughs> I, hear the, uh, I hear the elephant artwork is really, really cool in the. Uh, yes, they the are. Art. They're very cool. Um, you know, I I think the art is. I mean, to be honest with you, not just being because I'm an artist or anything. <laughs> no. I go out and I look at all the games and I look at you know the Westwood Studios and I look at the Blizzard games and I think you know God, these are great games and look how you know nice this is. And from where we were, you know, two years ago or four years ago when I first started the company or three and a half or whatever it was, it was it was very cool to think about, you know, Blizzard and to think that we one day might be some kind of competition to them in art. Um, not from a gameplay point, but for me it was art, you know, that was my dream in life. And um, to see now today that we're, you know, we're up there with them and, and that we're making this cool stuff and, and to look at our art and people say, you know, look how cool this is and look how good this looks and look at the 16-bit, you know, colors. And it's like, but it's not 16-bit, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, whatever, you know, we, we, we <laughs> bought that at E3 so bad. They were like, it's 16-bit. And we're like, no, it's not. And they're like, yes, it is. And it's like, <laughs> we made the game. And they're like, so it's 16-bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> how about you, and, Ian? Hmm. I'd have to say that I really like the concept of garrisoning. Did you uh, give that chance to protect yourself a little bit better and do well, a little it, it, adds, it, it ends up adding a lot of uh, unique strategies to the game that weren't there before. We have people that, uh, someone there said that they hated monks. <laughs> you really <laughs> hate them now because the technique that everyone likes is to station them next to a building that will allow garrisoning, pop out, convert something, put them back in and let them recharge while they're inside, and then pop them back out again. So they become even more of a nuisance in the hands of a player who uh, who really is a finesse kind of player and knows how to play them. Well, this sounds sounds great. I'm actually looking forward to getting a copy and oh, playing this one. Big time. I've got one last question for you as we're about out of time here. Who is the baddest AOE2 player in all of Ensemble? Dave Pottinger. He's the man? He's the yep. man? All no right. arguments? Yeah. Is that a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That's a challenge! <laughs> we'll, we'll tell him you called. <laughs> Make me destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the show, guys. Well, thanks for having us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this has been uh, Ian Fisher, Herb Elwood, and Mario Grimani of uh, Ensemble Studios, makers of Age of Empires 2, coming at you in October. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that retro interview. 
these are a lot of fun to bring to my YouTube channel, and I appreciate that you guys check them out. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to my buddy Drunken Master Paul, who allowed me to share these and dig through his archive and share it with the rest of the world. Also, I need to do a quick shout out to Keith Ferguson, who captured all the gameplay footage for me. He is one of my Patreons, and I greatly appreciated that. You saved me a ton of time. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching.